Devin Haney saying, listen, I know JoJo better than he knows himself. I will break him down piece by piece. Here we go. 12 rounds for the WBC lightweight title. Both fighters came right to the middle of the ring. It's very territorial. Who wants to control the middle of the ring? Devin Haney getting really aggressive with that front foot. Wants to back up Joseph Diaz early. And Sergio, I know you said that this fight will be decided in the later round. One of the mistakes Roy Linares made in his fight against Devin Haney was getting started too late. It wasn't until about the sixth round that Linares picked it up. Diaz can't afford to do that against Haney. Linares had to respect the power and the speed and the reach of Devin Haney as well. I mean, he has a great time left jab and a left hook, so you have to respect that. This crowd taking no prisoners, already booing these guys. Straight right hand lands for Devin. There's a right, partially blocked. Surprised that it's Haney who's working more? No, not at all. This is what I'm expecting. The first couple of rounds, Jojo Diaz is just trying to get the timing down of Haney, trying to break that distance, trying to get the rhythm of it. He doesn't want to make a, make a mistake too early. Yeah, this is where Haney's team wants him to be. They don't want him counter-punching and moving. They want him standing there and flicking that jab out at Jojo Diaz. They see that jab, Sergio, as almost a trap setter. They want him throwing it high, make Jojo lunge in so they can hit him with a counter shot. Jojo's a naturally smaller man coming up in weight, coming up in size. This is the biggest and tallest and the fastest fighter he's been in front of, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get that down. Seven-inch reach advantage for the Dream. Haney said if he wants to get inside, he's going to have to go through hell to get there. Oh, well, he's right. He saw the way Diaz fought against Javier Fortuna. Javier Fortuna, decent-sized guy himself. He just let JoJo walk in. Devin Haney is not letting Diaz come in without absorbing one or two shots. And Sergio, you told me earlier today, watch out for the cuts on JoJo Diaz. And we've already seen redness on his face. Yeah, but shots like that, that's... That's what I could see happening. If that cut opens up, it's going to be a hard. He's going to have to fight the jab of Devin Haney and have to fight the blood. Watch out, I can bring it. Notice how Devin Haney keeps stepping over the right foot of Jojo Diaz, controlling the footwork and the foot position. Very smart on Haney's part. A dominating round one for Devin Haney here in Las Vegas. Working for him, and he's doing good work early in this fight. And Stitch Duran as well, the cut guy. And usually you don't want to have too many voices in the corner, but it seems like, like they told Haney the right things and they have a good rhythm in that corner. George Cambosis, the unified champion, is here with us as well. George, what do you make of this fight so far? Yeah, it's a good start from Devin Haney. He's using his length, he's using his reach, and uh, he's looking sharp. But uh, JoJ in this round looks like he's putting a bit more pressure on, so it's getting exciting. Jojo still looking for some success here, hasn't found anything of consequence. But he's getting a little closer to Haney now, and Haney is comfortable punching at the gloves of Jojo Diaz. Nothing really breaking through. That was a great body shot by Devin Haney. Diaz caught him with a right hand to the body as well. And right now, it's almost target practice for Haney. Well, you heard his corner say, be careful, don't get lulled to sleep. Look for Devin Haney to start punching around the guard of Jojo Diaz. Jojo has that right, the guard's right up, but go around with hooks, left and right hooks, if you're Haney. Sergio, really impressed with the footwork so far of Devin Haney. He told me in the locker room he has fought a southpaw before, just once, but he's keeping that left foot around the foot of Jojo Diaz, which is giving us some leverage on these shots. Anytime his left foot is in the inside of Diaz, he puts it around. That's educated footwork. Jojo Diaz's only loss came against Gary Russell Jr. at featherweight back in May of 2018. That was a 
Nice check hook by Haney on the inside. They exchange hooks. Haney got the better of it with the left hook. A little jab lands for JoJo. But Haney punished him straight away. Slowly but surely, JoJo starting to close the distance a little bit. JoJo does a good job cutting off the ring and using his experience. He's not getting hit with nothing cleanly. There's a right hand that grazes Haney. Diaz, a two-time national champion in the amateurs. That's a good left hook for Diaz. Maybe one of his better punches of the night. Good body shot again from Haney. I love the attitude of Diaz after that round. I don't think he won that round, but one thing he said, he can't hurt me. Well, we saw in the Tiafimo Lopez fight, his father kept saying, you're winning these rounds. And Diaz Jr. said, I won that round, right? And no one told him he didn't win that round. Chris, did he win that round? No, I don't think he won that round. I've got a two rounds to none in favor of Devin Haney. A better round for JoJo Diaz. Now, he landed a pretty good left hand towards the end of it, but Devin Haney landed the cleaner shots. Ooh, that was a shot after he was told to stop punching from Haney. That's what you don't want JoJo Diaz doing, lunging like that, falling off balance, because Devin Haney has a wicked uppercut, if you can time that coming in. So Haney steps back, looking for those counters right there, so you don't want to fall short of your Diaz. Just like that. Nice uppercut from the dream. One thing I love about Devin Haney's game is that for such a young fighter, he has got great punch placement. We saw that in the fight against Linares. He rarely throws at the same spot twice. Is this the way the fight's going to go for the next no. nine rounds? I already said it twice. After the third round, I see JoJo having success because if he plans on winning this fight, he's going to have to find success in this third and fourth round. The speed, the, the speed and the length of Devin Haney is just too much in the early rounds right now. But the experience will kick in for JoJo Diaz. Diaz has never been stopped, never been knocked down. Says he's never been hurt either. Of course, Haney's never been dropped either. Good little uppercut on the inside, and that forced Haney to take a step back, and then a jab. Both these fighters are just so polished as pros. Even though they both had great amateur success, they're true professionals in there with body shots, hard jabs, not smothering themselves, combinations. Just beautiful to watch. Just power boxing at his best. And Haney's team doesn't want him moving as much as he's moved this round. Good right hand by Devin Haney. But they know that JoJo Diaz is indefatigable in there. He has got a great motor. They don't want him forcing Devin to move as much as he has. I like how JoJo is countering to the body of Haney as well. Stop. Getting a little chippy in there. And that's what Diaz wants. He wants it to get chippy. He wants it to get a little physical. Ten seconds to go here in the third round. That was off balance. They baited Diaz Jr. into walking right into something. George Cambosis with us. What did you think through three rounds? Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit more exciting, and uh, Joe just put, put a little more pressure on. Um, but Haney is boxing nice right now, so uh, let's see if they can stand a little bit more and try to give the fans a little bit more. I like that George Cambosis is high on the entertainment value. He wants action. We all do. Good, oh, body, good shot. body shot with the left hand from Jojo Diaz. That's exactly where Diaz wants to be. In the midsection of Devin Haney to slow him down. 
This is a good spell here for the challenger. I like what JoJo's doing here. He's aiming straight for the body, getting rough, getting physical. All you're going to get is a warning out of that. Hey, remember, Diaz is not afraid of the rough stuff. Had a point taken away early in the fight against Javier Fortuna. Still won by decision. Look, JoJo's already set his mark in round second, the second round, the third round. He probably didn't win him, but he's already getting closer and landing. That's a good round for Diaz. Oh, big left hand for Diaz. Best punch of the fight. Sergio told us. Diaz will come alive after three rounds. That appears to be the case here in the fourth. If I were fighting Devin Haney, that's exactly what I would do. Just get the tempo, get the rhythm, break them down. Then you start applying the pressure. Caught him again. Look at Diaz being the boss here in the fourth. And this is the fight JoJo Diaz wants, and that's what we expected. Chris, how is Haney handling this pressure now? Oh, look, JoJo's stepping on the gas more so in this round than he has any other. Devin's got to continue to stand there and keep flicking that jab out there. That's got to be his weapon against Diaz coming in. Are you surprised at how of a pro JoJo Diaz crowd this is here in Las Vegas, Sergio? No, absolutely not. I mean, we're in Las Vegas and we get the home. Whoa. Home of boxing here. Stop! Let go, let go, let go! Both these guys, tremendous counter punchers. That's why they have so much respect for each other, just throwing single, single shots and one twos. Anything after that can get countered. Let's see if Haney can regain control of this round here in the final 10 seconds. Good jab, and now it's Haney talking smack. From Sean Porter, our cavalcade of stars continue. What? What a fourth round that was, especially by JoJo Diaz. Both guys have had success through the course of this fight. And I'll tell you guys this, and I'll shut up. Listen, this, <laughs> listen, <laughs> more, than, more than conditioning, more than power, more than speed. Oh, whoever has, is consistent at their game plan, what they're doing well, is who's going to win this fight. You got to be consistent every single round for the end of this fight. Look at Haney going right to the body and hard. Yeah, I agree with Sean Porter. Both these guys, you can see what their game plan is. Devin Haney wants to operate behind the jab, see if he can lure JoJo in for counter shots. JoJo is trying as best he can to get on the inside. These last round plus, he has had the most success he's had in this fight. Consistency and laser focus, because we're seeing the exact same thing that Devin Haney was doing with Jorge Linares. Linares didn't start having success until the ninth round, and the tenth round we started hurting and rocking Haney. Let's look at Chris Mannix's scorecard through four. Yeah, I've got a three rounds to one in favor of Devin Haney. Thought he might have done, as you see JoJo flurrying in the corner. That straight left hand. Bent Haney, and then he came around the guard. Love the body shots. Keep on with the body shots of your Diaz. Around the guard goes Haney, that high guard from Diaz. Haney, or rather Diaz, telling us, listen, I'm not afraid of Haney's power at all. I'm going to eat two to land one. And Sergio, you called that in the last round, Haney started to go around that guard of Diaz, landing those shots. And that's what you do whenever you, you're dealing with a fighter with that peekaboo defense. You go around the guard, be content hitting gloves. These are points being piled up by Devin Haney. Devin Haney said, if he tries to pressure me all night, I'll use that aggression against JoJo Diaz. Oh, a right hand and a good one from Haney. Let go, let go. Stop, stop. Let go. I think both these fighters are fo following their game plan to a T. Nip and tuck back and forth. Stop, stop. Let go, let go.
Diaz not throwing as many punches as he did in the last round. Almost at the halfway point of this battle. Seven rounds to go. That last round, Haney backed up Diaz. I would love to see Diaz continue backing up Haney. That's his fight. Yeah, That's how you take control of the, of the ring, the center of the ring. Good advice from the corner of Jojo Diaz. You've got to eliminate the space between these two guys. That seven-inch reach advantage comes into play when the fight is at this distance. Keep it close. That's where Jojo Diaz can pile up points. Little catch and shoot from Devin Haney. And Jojo cutting off the ring nicely right there. Keeping Haney against the ropes. Quick body shots. Heavy artillery coming from Devin Haney to the body. Both of them looking for the exact same shots, only Haney's punches are a little longer and they're a little cleaner to see. says I carry no emotion in the ring whatsoever even when I spar my friends I beat the crap out of them this is beautiful boxing right here by Devin Haney shifting punching countering not staying still that's the sweet science right there guys Diaz has him in the corner that's where he wants him to be Little success there, but Haney quickly out. Punches through round five. Look at the landed punches, Chris Mannix. Way closer than it feels. Yeah, it does feel like it's a little, should be a little more lopsided for Devin Haney, but JoJo has kept that guard up consistently. Maybe he's blocked more than we thought. Nothing's landing cleanly, like I said earlier, but still, those are points. Even though they're not landing cleanly, you're still punching something. Haney sat down on that punch. Overhand right. Do you think Haney respects JoJo's power? I think jo I think uh, Haney respects JoJo, period, because he knows he's gritty. He knows he can get there. He has to respect the counter punching, too. Hey! Combination and the last shot goes for Diaz. Let's bring back in George Camposis with the halfway point, George. What do you see? Yeah, look, Devin's boxing nice. He's moving, he's, uh, he's pinpointing his shots. But uh, again, Jojo Dez is still there. He's still coming forward. So, uh, you know, it is getting nice and exciting. And, um, you know, we can see Devin's uh, boxing skills. But uh, you can see the hunger as well in Jojo Dez. Well, Sergio, if the judges see it about the same way Chris does, Diaz is running out of rounds if he wants to win a decision. JoJo's in this fight, but I don't know if he's winning rounds. Let's send it over to Chris Mannix, who's with. Bill, what are you seeing out of, jo out of uh, Devin? I see JoJo uh, breaking down. He's a great fighter, right? And I'm, and I'm, and I'm happy. And I'm happy with what Devin is doing. Uh, JoJo didn't come. He didn't come to lay down. This was great. The, just the fight that the people want to see. Everyone is, uh, JoJo, he brought a lot of people out and we're doing good. He's doing really good right now. What adjustments would you like to see Devin make in the second half of this fight? Uh, actually, just be just, just be a little bit more patient. And, and he's doing that. He's doing that. Thanks, Bill. Counter right hands from Haney, who's willing to seem, Sergio, more willing to stand and trade now. And here's another gear. Everyone wants to see if Devin Haney has that aggressive gear. He's backing up JoJo. He's giving an opportunity for JoJo to land something. JoJo keeps the earmuffs up. And in between rounds, you heard Devin Haney say, JoJo's fading, he's fading. I don't think he's fading, I just think Haney's getting more com comfortable in there. The crowd rising up, they think JoJo Diaz is onto something here. 
Oh, Big shot. Left hook caught him. Got a smile out of Devin Haney, but he sure felt that one. He smiled when the Norris hurt him too. A minute to go here in round seven. JoJo's round so far. Another left hand from JoJo Diaz. Jab is always there for Devin Haney to fall back on. You know, a lot of times when Floyd Mayweather fought in Las Vegas, he got booed. People wanted to see him lose. And right now, this is a very pro JoJo crowd. was a pitcher and a baseball player. Round eight, MGM Grand Garden Arena. Sean Porter, what do you think? I think that the consistency, you know, I'm gonna go back to that. The last round, Devin Haney was winning the round, and then he got inconsistent. He changed his style, and he started getting caught with an overhand left and a couple of straight lefts as well. JoJo Diaz found that left hand in the last round. If he's consistent at doing that, JoJo may close the distance on these points, but right now I think that Devin Haney has a comfortable lead. Yeah, Chris, it feels like JoJo's gonna have to win most of, if not all, the remaining rounds to get a decision. Well, I think he's still very much in this fight. Doesn't have to get reckless, doesn't have to get desperate. Just continue what he's been doing over these last couple of rounds. Get on the inside, dig to the body. When you have the opportunity to throw that overhand left, let it rip. Chris Mannix has given two rounds to JoJo Diaz. Another shot to the body. Straight right hand from Haney. He caught him on the ear. It's going to take something special if Haney wants to get Diaz out of there. Diaz needs to throw more punches. I understand that he respects the speed and the and the, the range and the power and the distance from Haney, but you're here to win. Diaz needs to take chances now. And it's Haney's corner yelling for him to let his hands go. I don't know if he needs to let his hands go, but he does need to keep sticking stop, stop, that jab. Stop, 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 stop. He had a lot of success in the early it. rounds. Throwing one, two, three jabs, then throwing right hands right behind him, just like that shot right there. Nice stick and move from Haney. Stick and move and get out of the way. Seems like Diaz is content looking for that one big shot again. That overhand left, and now he's looking for right hooks. That's where he launched it. Didn't hit it clean. Stop. Let go, stop go, let go. Time! Back up, back up. Round nine, four to go. Jojo Diaz Jr., the challenger, Devin Haney, the WBC lightweight champion. be a critical round for Jojo Diaz. He needs to win this round to stay in this fight, to stay 
in range to win this, be, be able to win this fight and back up Haney and get respect. Yeah, he's got to stop following Haney around and not letting his hands go. He's putting Haney where he wants it in those corners, but it's Haney throwing the combination slipping out. JoJo has got to let his hands go here. Here's where Diaz wants him. He's got him in the corner. Is he gonna unload? Diaz needs to be mindful of that right uppercut, but still, he needs to throw caution to the wind. That's what he needs to do. Punch anywhere and everywhere. Oh, and nice shot there from Haney. Good round from Diaz, though. A lot of activity from him. Stairs goes Diaz Jr. Just missing with the left. Haney has landed some really good body shots on Diaz. Haney has the entire arsenal, and we're seeing it on display here. It's just Jojo Diaz keeping those hands up, and it doesn't look clean, but every punch has been landed, every punch has been thrown. That just shows you how tough Jojo is. He is absorbing a lot of punishment and continues to march forward. I don't think it's punishment exactly. I just think it's the punches are being landed. Oh, there was a left right on the rib cage from Devin Haney. Oh, big uppercut, and that forces JoJo backwards. And this might be the moment for Devin Haney. He's splitting the guard. And then finally JoJo fires back and he caught Haney in the line of fire. Best round of the fight. I think Diaz rocked him with that right hook. Oh, and he caught him again. again. Caught him with the right. JoJo Diaz needing a big round and he just got one. He's punches. I felt like that was a good round for Jojo Diaz. Both of you guys okay, both looked at me like I was crazy, especially you, Maddox. Well, I thought Diaz had some moments there, but to Sergio's point, over three minutes, Devin Haney was in control, landing good body shots. And Diaz's biggest problem in that last round where there were too many times when he had to Haney against the ropes or in the corner, and he did not let his hands go as frequently as he should. The story of the fight is Devin Haney controlling most of the most of the round, and then JoJo landing a big shot or two. And you mentioned how many body shots Diaz has absorbed. That will obviously take a lot of steam out of you. That'll it slow it down should. your punching output. It should, but Diaz still coming forward, still backing up Haney. This is where they want him to unload. He's got Haney back in the corner, and that's what he's doing. He's still aiming at Watch that body. Hands. Watch your hands. Okay, stop, stop. Let go, let go. Watch your hands, watch your hands. Entertaining fight here in Las Vegas. Look around on social media, Chris, a lot of fans have this scored closer than you two. Could you see an argument for that? Okay, stop. Not really. Let go. Let go. Let go. <laughs> okay. It's not to say Diaz isn't having moments, but for the first half of this fight, Haney was operating behind the jab really well. And while Diaz is able to close the distance over the last couple of rounds, you still see Haney throwing combinations, landing combinations, having a little bit more success. Look, I love the way Diaz is fighting. I think he, he's having his moments. He's landing some big shots. I think he rocked and got the respect of Haney. But controlling the middle of the ring, that's part of defense. That's part of points as well. It's not all effective aggression. It's ring generalship and defense you get points for. It. Maybe it's because we're so close to the action, but 432 to 423 thrown. It just seems like Haney is throwing so many more punches. seconds to go here in the 10th round. 
Diaz has had moments, but he needs more of them. Oh, big shot by Haney right on the body. A big left hook by Haney. That <laughs> really was. Oh, wow. Man, Diaz is one tough customer. Yes, he is. Well, according to some live wagering right now, Devin Haney a minus 3,000 favorite to win this fight. Let's go to George Cambosis as we enter the championship rounds. Yeah, I'll go to seven to three. Haney's uh, picking the rounds. You know, he's doing what he's got to do. And, uh, you know, JoJo's trying hard. He's pushing for it. He has landed some good shots. He has had his moments. But um, I don't think the power is there as a natural 135er. Oh, that uppercut buzzed. Diaz Jr., thanks, George. Here's what Diaz wants him, but Haney fighting well off the ropes. Doubling it up on the left hook. That's what you gotta do if you have someone blocking them shots. He already got accustomed to, to blocking one shot from one side. Double and triple up on one side. That's how you penetrate those gloves. Chris, is Diaz showing enough urgency in your mind? Okay, I think he's doing exactly what he has to do. He's just not as active as he needs to be when he gets in close with Devin Haney. And to Sergio's point, when you see them backed up in the corner, it's Devin throwing and landing the bigger shots. Okay, stop! Let go! Watch your hands. Watch your hands. Right on the belt line for Diaz Jr. Good body shot, great body shot by Jojo Diaz. Ain't he looking up at the clock now? I caught that too. A minute and a half to go in the round, he checked that clock. I think this. Haney's in control, he's winning rounds, but it, I'm pretty sure he wants this fight to be over with already. Let him go, stop! Let go, let go! Get your head up. Well, not much time left. Only one more round to go. Diaz trying to find something special, something dramatic here. to fall asleep at the wheel like I did against Linares. Feels like he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job, but there's, there's, a, there's a little fragility in him I'm seeing in this round. This is a good round for Jojo Diaz. He backed up Haney. He was able to get his shots. If he can close out strong in this 12th round, maybe get a drop, drop Haney. Maybe he can get closer. So here we go, three minutes left. Diaz needs something big. And you can see right away, Diaz understands that. He knows he needs a knockout to win. All right, Sean, what do you think has to happen here? I'll tell you what, I'll be quick. This has been an exciting night of boxing, great night of boxing. I think that Devin Haney has piled on the, the rounds, as we all expected. Uh, Jojo Diaz just seconds, just steps behind him. And if anything, Jojo needs a knockout to win this. There you have it from the newly retired Sean Porter. So Diaz Jr. most likely needs a knockdown, if not a knockout. Chris, how do you have this score through 11 full rounds? Oh, a big, big punch there. Big moment here for Diaz. JoJo will not stop fighting, will not stop looking for those big punches, and Haney better watch out for those. Boy, Haney. Better be careful, you're right, Sergio. And this is what JoJo said about Haney. He's never been on this fight. He's never been on this stage with champions like this. JoJo has. Bit of a moment here for JoJo Diaz. Devin Haney looks a little bit shook. But credit to Haney. 
He's not going all out defense. He's going toe to toe. Caught him coming in. When Haney can put it on cruise control and just go, he's fighting. He's fighting fire for fire with fire with Jojo Diaz. Oh, Haney might be a little buzzed there. His balance seemed off. Jojo might have punched himself out. This is what you want a 12th round to look like. Especially in a championship fight. Oh, and it's Haney with a straight right. This is a championship fight, guys. This is a championship fight in the last round right now. Both Warriors giving, giving you everything they have. Seconds to go. Does Diaz have one more heavy shot left in him? How about Haney closing strong now? And that's going to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at the NTF Grand Garden, Dave Moretti and Max DeLuca, 117-111. Tim Cheatham, 116-112. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, the WBC lightweight champion of the world, Devin the Dream. And the judges got it right, Todd. This is what we saw. It was a close, it was a competitive fight, but it was a unanimous decision. 117-111 sounds about right.